As COVID cases continue to climb, GOP politicians are doubling down on their opposition to mask and vaccine mandates. On top of everything else, the FDA has to warn people not to take livestock dewormer. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. COVID cases are continuing to rise and public health officials are pleading with people to get vaccinated and wear a mask. And yet, last night, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, whose state has been recording more daily cases on average in the last few weeks than any time during the pandemic, and who's against mask and vaccine mandates, actually blamed the Biden administration for not ending COVID. He said he was going to end COVID. Um, he hasn't done that. It's quite a feat to be the biggest ass in Florida and not be from New York. Normally, it's the retired New Yorkers creating problems. One time I was buying board shorts at a surf shop in Boca, and I overheard a guy yelling at a cashier, you're telling me it's eight bucks for a puka shell necklace when I can go down to the beach and get him for free? Get the f out of here. That said, I think he ended up buying the necklace. Yeah, that's right. I did. That going to be a problem? No, not going to be a problem. Uh, I'm making an observation. Okay, good for you. Now do your little show. Okay, I will. <laughs> Shoemaker, will you walk me to my car tonight? <laughs> DeSantis really knows how to boil your blood, which is a bummer because Florida usually conjures up feelings of vacation and relaxation, or at the very least, you know, gators on meth benders. Their governor should be one of those old guys who grows a ponytail to make up for going bald and has a platinum membership at Tommy Bahama, but somehow they ended up with this comic book henchman. Whatever this guy says something, it just brings out the New Yorker in me. I have the same reaction to DeSantis that I do when I see a guy double park his BMW in a fire lane outside of Dwayne Reed. I'm just like, this guy. I was just running in for a monster energy. That's a problem? What? I was double parked because I was running in for a monster energy. Is that a problem? No, that's your right as an American. Seriously, like maybe bring your pepper spray too. Anyway, back to Ron DeSantis. You're blaming the federal government for not ending COVID when your state just passed three million cases. ICUs are filling up, hospitals are fighting to get oxygen. And instead of promoting mitigation efforts we know can work like masks, you've actively stood in the way of mandates, even in schools. You can't just make us forget about all that. Those facts are all public record. They don't just disappear like sweet nothings whispered in the summer wind. And by the way, those don't disappear either. You said you'd love me till the end of time. Well, I didn't know you were gonna put wet towels on the bed. But that's why Fox News exists, to create an upside down world where nothing matters. Not only do they exist in a reality free bubble, but they don't even adhere to their own internal logic. One day, for example, when they're pushing back against efforts to get more people vaccinated, an anchor like Brian Kilmeade will say something like this. I don't think anchors should be recommending medical advice. Yeah. I well, uh, yeah, you know, but a lot of people have been tuning into the show for 25 years to see what we think about different things. I think if you have the opportunity, get the shot. Right, but okay. shouldn't you see a doctor to give you expertise about what they're seeing? You're a doctor, and that's what people usually do. They call their doctor for medical advice, and that's what people should be doing. Dr. Siegel, thanks so much. Right, don't call the president, call me. You yeah, got uh, it. yeah, or anchors. We should just talk to doctors. <laughs> I'm surprised Kilmeade is so bullish on consulting doctors, especially after the way they botched his eye closening surgery. <laughs> and they really reveal themselves as wealthy and out of touch when they say something like, call your doctor. This is America. Lots of people, especially young and low income people, don't have doctors. You might as well say, if you want more information on this story, talk to the head butler on your yacht. Second, anchors, including your co-host, Steve Ducey, and credit to him. They aren't recommending medical advice by telling you about a life-saving vaccine during a deadly pandemic any more than Hot Ones is recommending dietary advice by telling you to drink milk with your wings, which, side note, might help with your mouth, but it's an awful combination for your stomach. I won't go into details, but two days after I did that show, I was on WebMD typing in the words, what do you do if you can't stop <laughs> your pants? And let's see. Take off your pants? Well, that's not the help I was hoping for. <laughs> And also, side note, there's a lot of cursing in today's Closer Look, and that's because last night, the Mets lost 3-2 to two to the Giants and dropped to four games below 500. They hit into five double plays. When I came in this morning, our security guard, Jim Breyer, was fully sobbing. <laughs> and he thought he was dying because he had never cried before. He didn't know what tears were. He told me he didn't even go home yesterday after the show. He just rode the Long Island Railroad all night drinking Natty Light Tall Boys. Apparently, they run a special train just for that after the Mets lose. And that train is now the leading cause of global warming. 
anyway, the point is that's what Fox and other right-wing figures have often said when the topic of vaccines come up. Don't listen to anchors or politicians for medical advice. But then when they wanted to promote Regeneron's monoclonal antibody treatment for COVID patients, they had a slightly different take. If you don't get vaccinated and you go to the hospital, most of the time you're going to get Regeneron. But Regeneron are the antibodies. So right. you're basically still getting vaccinated because they're sticking you right. with an antibody. No, it's not the same as getting vaccinated any more than getting defibrillated is the same thing as taking your heart medication. Now, there's definitely evidence that monoclonal antibodies can be effective, especially in reducing severe disease. And that is great. But public officials have stressed it's not a cure and it's not the way out of the pandemic. As with, you know, any illness, it's much better to prevent people from getting sick in the first place. So telling people it's the same as getting vaccinated is deeply irresponsible because while Regeneron may work as a treatment, safe and effective vaccines that provide tremendous protection against severe disease and death are abundant and they're easy to get. You can walk into pharmacies, health centers, mobile clinics or mega sites and get a shot in like 20 minutes and be done. Restaurants are offering them and appetizers now. The other day I went to a dinner party and we ordered a round of Pfizer shots for the table, along with crab puffs and chicken fingers. <laughs> of course, <laughs> this has been the case on the right since the start of the pandemic. For some reason, when it comes to vaccines, they say things like, don't listen to anchors and politicians, talk to your doctor. But then they have a very different take when it comes to unproven treatments like the anti-malaria drug hydroxychloroquine, or most recently, something called ivermectin. We know that our FDA has in many ways failed us by not allowing for the use of ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine, both of which are used around the world to reduce COVID hospitalizations and deaths. They seem to keep saying like the vaccination is the only answer, the only answer. And we now know from studies and also from um, the evidence that we saw of the use of ivermectin in India that it does work. I don't know how many, 100,000 lives might have been saved if they had let the public and doctors talk about hydroxychloroquine and, and ivermectin and prescribe it without being called um, by a pharmacist as if they are doing something illegal. This drug, ivermectin, has been called, at least by some doctors, a miracle drug when it comes to treating COVID-19. There's a good chance everyone listening at home has never heard of ivermectin because Google has gone about censoring any discussions, including discussions inside the halls of Congress about this drug from their platforms, including YouTube. My God, Fox News has basically turned into one of those spam emails promising you free natural boner pills for life. Anytime someone tries to sell you a miracle drug that they don't want you to know about, you should be suspicious. That's how I ended up with the case of Mike Lindell's My Pills. <laughs> they were supposed to help me grow a full, luxuriant mustache, but I only ended up with one or two of the hairs. So what exactly is ivermectin? This is a, a, a deworming agent, a parasitic deworming agent for livestock that has been used for years and around the world. What? What is it chemically? Yeah, so you're talking about an anti-infective that has been used for a number of conditions, uh, everything from skin conditions to parasitic conditions. But again, this is pharmaceutical grade, not livestock grade that's being prescribed. And we really are starting to get these kind of crazy calls where people are now playing doctor. And this is very dangerous. The Mississippi State Department of Health confirming today that, quote, at least 70 percent of the recent calls to poison control in Mississippi have been related to ingestion of livestock or animal formulations of ivermectin purchased at livestock supply centers. I mean, you wouldn't get your treat your pneumonia um, with your with your animals medication. Um, it can be dangerous to, to get the wrong doses of medication, especially for something that's meant for a horse or a cow. I got to say, when I first heard that Fox News was pushing ivermectin, I knew it was going to be bad, but I was not expecting it to be horse dewormer. Sounds like the name of a drug they give super soldiers in a Paul Verhoeven movie to turn them into robocops. You know someone at the company that made ivermectin once said, hey, should we put not for people on the horse pill labels? And someone else said, there's a picture of a horse on the bottle. It's fine. I mean, how does it keep getting dumber and dumber. First it was hydroxychloroquine, then it was bleach, powerful lights, now it's horse dewormer. I'm honestly terrified to imagine what's next. One day we're gonna wake up and Brian Kilmeade's gonna be telling people you can cure COVID by eating kibble and sleeping in a bed of kitty litter. Works for me, that's why I blink as often as a sphinx. Normally when you hear the phrase horse pills, you think it's a euphemism, but in this case, it's literal horse pills. Imagine getting that offer in the bathroom at a club. Hey man, you wanna ride the stallion? Sure, what is it? Heart pills for a stallion. 
Things have gotten so bad, the WHO and Merck have warned against using ivermectin. And this week, the FDA had to issue a tweet that said, you are not a horse, you are not a cow. Seriously, y'all, stop it. There's no better indicator of where we're at as a nation that the face of the FDA has resorted to y'all. The juxtaposition of anti-vaccine rhetoric and scam artists pushing an unproven livestock to warmer is just so crazy. In Texas, for example, the governor just banned vaccine mandates, even though the Pfizer vaccine is now fully approved. At the same time, calls to Texas poison control about ivermectin are soaring. There's been a 550% increase. On top of everything else now, doctors have to deal with this too. Can you imagine how exhausted they are? Doc, I'm feeling a little, did you take horse pills? No, no, I didn't. Sorry, I gotta sneeze. <laughs> I did take horse pills. <laughs> I mean, if you think doctors are fed up, imagine how employees at feed stores feel. Here's a report from local news in Georgia where a reporter had to call local feed stores to ask them about customers trying to buy ivermectin for COVID. Some folks are lining up for the FDA approved Pfizer vaccine. Others are trying a different approach to fight COVID-19 animal dewormer. Never thought I'd have to do an explainer on why people should not use animal dewormer, but here we are. Several feed stores in central Georgia say they're sold out of the drug called ivermectin. One employee at the tractor supply in Byron told me they can't keep it on the shelves over the last few days. I called over a dozen stores until I found a small mom and pop feed store. When I asked the employee if they had it in stock, he said yes, but he asked, are you buying this for an animal? Ma'am, please don't say you're buying this for COVID. That's where we are right now. You know who the real victims are here? The horses who can't get their worm pills. Whoa, whoa, Smokey, whoa. I got bad news, boy. I've been to every feed store in the state, but they're all out. I did get you a Pfizer vaccine they were about to throw away because it was going to expire. Easy, boy. Easy, Smokey. <laughs> we have a political coalition fighting against mask and vaccine mandates while also pushing unproven miracle cures. This just proves yet again that you shouldn't get medical information from right-wing media any more than you should get it from a horse or a cow. This has been A Closer Look. God's Love We Deliver cooks and brings over two million meals a year to men, women, and children living with HIV AIDS, cancer, and other serious illnesses, and they need your help. If you're watching this online, you can hit the donate button, stay safe, wear a mask, get vaccinated. We love you.